This video is the first of two videos intended to introduce you to the topic groundwater. We'll start out by going over some basic termino terminology related to aquifers. That's the first video, the one that you're watching right now. And then in the second video we'll talk about groundwater flow, what controls movement of groundwater in the subsurface. I believe that this is a very important topic for you to learn about. Groundwater is uh, an extremely precious precious resource. Over 1.5 billion people worldwide and more than half of the population of people in the United States rely on groundwater for their primary source of drinking water. In addition to this it also provides about 50 billion gallons per day for agricultural needs. Okay, So groundwater is really important. This is something that you need to know about. So what the heck is groundwater anyway? Well, when it rains, some of the water runs overland, right? Uh, it could end up in lakes and streams, potentially make its way to the ocean. Uh, but that's not where all of the water goes. Some of it percolates into the subsurface. And groundwater is basically just water that exists beneath the Earth's surface. It exists uh, within the pores, of, uh, the pore spaces in, in rocks and sediment. Okay, this could be the pores between grains of sand as depicted here. If you were to uh, fill up a cup with sand, those sand grains wouldn't actually take up all of the space within the cup. Right? They don't fit together perfectly. There would be space left over. And so you could, you could add water to that cup. And that water would exist within the pore spaces between those grains of sand. And that is one of the places that uh, water can exist in the subsurface pores within rocks uh, and sediment. In addition to this, uh, groundwater uh, can also exist in fractures. This can be an important volume uh, in terms of where groundwater exists, particularly in uh, crystalline rock like granite or basalt. Uh, they don't typically contain a lot of pore space like a sandstone would, uh, but they can still hold a fair amount of water in their fractures. In any case, Groundwater typically does not exist within vast underground caverns. Okay? It's usually not water that you would be able to go for a swim in. While you can get some large caverns that develop in caves, most of the time groundwater exists in small fractures and pores, uh, such as I've described here. Hydrogeologists divide rock, and, uh, rock or sediment that contains groundwater into two categories based on the ability of groundwater to flow through the rock or sediment. Okay. Aquifers are rock or sediment that water can flow through easily. We say that they have a relatively high permeability. To a hydrogeologist, permeability is a measure of how easily water can flow through rock or sediment. Uh, rock or sediment that is permeable or has a relatively high permeability um, is often coarse-grained. For example, many aquifers are made up of coarse-grained sand and gravel. They have a significant amount of pore volume, but more importantly, those pores are well connected, and that allows water to pass through it fairly easily. In contrast to aquifers, aquitards are rock or sediment that water cannot easily flow through. Okay. Aquitards have a relatively low permeability and they tend to be fine-grained uh, rocks like shale or siltstone. What I've attempted to illustrate here on the bottom left is a very highly magnified look at a shale. Shale is composed largely of clay minerals. Clay minerals have kind of a platy shape and so we're looking at them on their edge. And uh, at most those clay minerals are about two microns in length. Okay, so that means that you could line up at least 500 clay minerals within one millimeter. Okay, so they're really small. Um, so while shale might contain a fair amount of pore space, those pores tend to be very small and not very well connected because of those small grains. And this limited conductivity uh, means that the water cannot flow through them easily. They have a relatively low permeability. <clears throat> aquifers that exist below aquitards are referred to as confined aquifers. Essentially the movement of water 
within the aquifer is confined by the aquitard. Okay, these aquifers can develop significant uh, pressures as a result because that water cannot uh, is confined by the aquitard. In some cases, there's enough pressure so that when you drill a well into that confined aquifer, water can come shooting out of the well onto the surface. And those are called, uh, those wells are called flowing artesian wells. Uh, here's an extreme example from South Dakota. This picture was taken uh, in about 1900. Water in the confined aquifer tapped by the well was under so much pressure that the uh, water shot to a height of nearly 100 feet above the, above the surface. Aquifers that are not overlain by an aquitard, but instead are overlain by the water table, are referred to as unconfined aquifers. The water table is simply the surface below which pore space and rock and sediment is filled with water. In other words, the pore space below the water table is saturated. The pore space above the water table may contain some water, uh, but the pores are not completely filled. Okay, hydrogeologists call that region of the subsurface the Vado zone, or uh, it's often referred to also as the unsaturated zone. Okay, so it, those pore spaces up there can contain some water, but they are not completely filled. Water tables generally are not flat. Uh, they tend to um, instead mimic the shape of the overlying land surface. So they tend to be higher under hills and lower in valleys. In humid regions, uh, the water table tends to be relatively close to the surface. Precipitation events are frequent in humid regions, so there's frequently water making its way into the subsurface and helping to uh, keep the water table at a fairly high elevation. Uh, because of this high level, uh, the water table often intersects the land surface and helps supply the water that's found in streams and lakes. In this way, the groundwater and surface water are connected. They do not exist independently. Okay, they, there's an exchange of water that takes place. In arid regions, precipitation events are not as frequent, so the water table tends to be located deeper in the subsurface. There's less water flowing into them, uh, into the saturated zone from precipitation when uh, compared to uh, humid regions. As a result, this, uh, the Vado zone in arid regions tends to be uh, much thicker than in humid regions. And as a result, those um, uh, water tables typically do not intersect the, uh, the land surface and help supply water uh, to surface water bodies like streams. Okay, in the, next, um, in the next video, we'll talk about groundwater flow, what, uh, what controls groundwater flow in the subsurface. Thank you.